Today, we're gonna create this Julian Alborna style animation in DaVinci Resolve. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. You can use the exact same assets that I'm using in this video. The link's in the description to download them and follow along. Add a fusion composition onto your timeline and drag it out to about 10 seconds or so. This animation is going to be about 10 seconds. Then drag it up one track. And now we can open this up in the Fusion page. First thing we want to do is add a media in node and connect it to the media out. And selecting the media in node under media source, change this from timeline to background. Now go back to the editing page and in the media pool, add the paper texture underneath. Then go back into Fusion page. In the Fusion page, add a merge node and then add our logo in here and then connect it to the merge. Now add a rectangle node and connect it to the media. Under width and height, change this from 0.5 to 1 and then the center X, change this from 0.5 to 0. Now it splits this logo in half. Select everything, copy and paste it. Select the second rectangle and change the center X from 0 to 1. Now it's the opposite side. Select the merge on one of the logos and pin it to the inspector. Select the other other merge under center right click and select expression and connect this point to the center of the previous merge when we select the pin merge we can move it around select the second merge again and check the invert transform box let's animate these select the merge that is pinned on frame 20 add a keyframe on center and go up to frame 60 add another keyframe there and then we're going to pull this out to 0.5 go to frame 180 and add another keyframe there and go to frame 230 add a keyframe and put this back to 0.5 and now we can open the spline window select everything uh, zoom to fit smooth out the in animation so select both these keyframes s on your keyboard and drag the last part out and the same with the out animation select everything s on your keyboard and smooth everything out go back to frame 20 add a background node connected to a new merge add a rectangle connected to the background uncheck the solid box adjust the width and the height so it is as close or as far as you want it from the edges i'm going to uncheck the show view controls and increase the border width so it's a nice thin line that we have and then increase the corner radius put the length on 0.5 and the position change this also to 0.25 under border style change this from round to flat let's duplicate this line copy and paste connect it to the main line select the second rectangle and change the angle to 180 select the first rectangle pin it to the inspector select the second one right click on length and select expression and drag it down and connect it to the length on the first rectangle now when we we adjust the length on the first rectangle both will be affected we want the second one to mirror the first one to do that select the merge on the second rectangle and enable the vertical flip now when we go back and adjust the length they will both play in like that on frame 20 20, we're going to add a keyframe on length 0.05 and then go back to frame 0 and pull this down to 0. Quickly open the spline window and uncheck everything else. Select everything, S on your keyboard and drag this last part out. Let's add some labels here so we can see what's happening. On frame 20, select the merge on logo left and just pin it to the inspector and unpin anything else. And then go to our outline, the left one first, select center, add an expression and connect it to this one. Same thing with merge two, under center, add an expression and connect it to that same center. Now, when we select this pinned merge and we control the center, it will be controlled but we need to invert this outline the same way we did with the logo. So select the outline on the right, check the invert transform box. Now when we control this again, everything follows only one keyframe. We're gonna add this 3D brain animation, drag it in and add it on a new merge. Now that's behind the logo. 
decrease the size a little bit so we don't see this. And now below this logo, we want to add a shadow. So open your select tool and search for shadow. Not drop shadow or shader, just normal shadow. Add some softness here, change the shadow offset, something like that. That looks pretty cool. Let's add a new merge node and then connect the background to that node. And on top of that, we're gonna add a multi poly node connected to the background so let's draw draw it somewhere and then just move it to the middle and then we're going to draw the edge and connect it to this line change the border width to the same thickness as the outline go to the poly one right click on it and select duplicate drag the stop part to the other side connect it to this point so let's duplicate that again or let's third one is going to be in the middle here and then duplicate that again and just move it down so move this to this part and duplicate this again move it down this will make sense later and then last time duplicate this and on top of that, we're going to add an ellipse node and just connect it on top of the poly, drag it down. Below the background node, add a waviness. Add that in and you can see that's pretty crazy. Drag the speed down. Selecting the scale, right click under modify width, select shake. Go to modifiers at the top here. On under minimum, select five and under maximum, select 29. And then we want smoothness all the way to the top. Now let's duplicate this waviness node, copy this and paste another one below this. Change the waviness type from horizontal to vertical. Under modifiers on the second waviness, change the random seed and the minimum to three and maximum to around about 19. So we'll get more randomness on frame 60 select the polygon so we're going to start this at frame 60 select the first polygon under right right click here for shape animation check the keyframe there move this point so that it meets with that first point and then the same with polygon 2 check the keyframe and go to polygon 2 so now we know number 2 is this one number 3 is going to be this one check the keyframe and move number 3 and then the same with this one check the keyframe and then move it to that point same with this one check the keyframe the last one keyframe and move it now we'll go from frame 60 go all the way to frame 180 just before the logo close go back to polygon one and now it's easy we don't have to re-enable the keyframe just select this one and drag it until it meets the point select number two drag it there number three drag it to the middle number four drag it down in number five and this is number six Go to the middle of these two, between 60 and 180, round about here. Let's go in and then drag them to meet the points again. So this is a little tedious, but the animation will look so good when we're done. So go to the frame 90 and then do the same thing. Go around and just connect these. So when we're done with the keyframes, let's animate them out. So go to frame 60, let's go back maybe around about frame 30 and let's move them in and connect these points and then add this one in just before frame 20. Just move them up again, that part there. Go to frame 45, continue with the same process. Frame two, a little bit of manual, refine these until we get the result that we want. When the box closes on frame 21, let them go out, out of the frame like that. Perfect. And then we're going to do the same thing with the out animation. So start at frame 200 and then do the same thing. <laughs> After we're done with all our keyframes, let's add the halftone texture and finish this animation. I'm pretty happy with how everything turns out. Add a merge node, connect a luma key to the merge node, the one without the LKY in brackets. Select our shadows only, clean that up a little bit, the black finesse, clean the whites. And then go to denoise, add a little bit of denoise in here. Cool. Let's add in another two merge nodes. 
And now we can change our output settings like this. Select the halftone texture and connect it to this merge right here. Select that merge, change it from normal to screen and the operator from over to mask. And then select this merge and change it from over to under and then connect the output from merge 5, this merge, connect this to the green output right there. Now our halftone texture is only on our our shadows. Now we can go to this merge right here and change the size depending on how big or how small we want this halftone texture to be. And then denoise a little bit. Selecting our fusion composition in our editing page, go to the color page and turn the saturation all the way down. Go back to the edit page under effect, select an adjustment clip, place it on top. You can do this in the fusion comp as well, but I like to do it on the timeline. Go back to the color tab, select the adjustment clip, add a circular window to make it a little bit bigger. Select the blur window, push the blur all the way up, go back to the circular window and check this invert box. Now all the blur will be on the outside. I'm just gonna change the width of this a little bit. In the primary color wheels, pull down the gain a little bit. Now you can add another adjustment clip on top. Search for camera shake. Now this shake is way too much. Under motion scale and speed scale, we're just gonna move this down until we get like a nice little shake. When you're done with your animation, it should look something like this. If you like these type of videos, please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps me immensely. Leave me a comment below. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear about it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.